Rand here from Rare Network. We're here with Daniel Barbosa from uh, the Linux Foundation and Hyperledger Foundation. How's your consensus going so far? It's been fantastic. This is the eighth year that the foundation is here supporting Coindesk's consensus event. Um, and every year is just a great opportunity to meet with old friends and new faces um, and really see how the uh, ecosystem is evolving. So it's been great. Absolutely, and thank you first off all for taking the time to do this interview with us. I know it's been a busy convention here, so thank you so much. I wanted to kind of kick it off with a little bit about your history. What got you into blockchain and open source first and foremost? Sure, it's a great story. Uh, um, I'm actually a librarian. <laughs> I have a master's of library and information science, and the reason I wanted to be a librarian is not the books. I love the library, I love books and all, but I really thought, you know, in the early 90s when I was, I was doing my undergrad, that you know the internet was going to be you know a, a place for everybody to be able to get access to information and financial use cases etc. So I got very excited about that, but I understood that you know people needed to get involved in in, in the, and if you think about you know blockchain for example. Um, it is really about you know financial inclusion, getting access to the technology, but it's about data. So like what I studied was essentially how you know information technology, information and data uh, moves things in markets. Um, I worked at Dow Jones for 17 years, um, and as part of that, really understood how financial services and banks worldwide use data um, and move data around, uh, uh, you know, as part of you know what they deliver to the market as well. And so in early you know in the early days of Bitcoin and blockchain. I got very interested, but also saw it like I was like, you know, I'm not really interested in like the crypto bro culture at the time. Um, and then in 2016, when the Linux Foundation um, formed the Hyperledger project, um, that was, you know, where the first time where enterprises actually got together. You know, we educated over 200,000, I think it's close to like 260,000 uh, enterprise um, executives around what blockchain was. Um, and a lot of those executives are now leading some of the biggest blockchain companies out there. So it's great to see, be That's part of that. amazing. And this leads actually mm -hmm. right into the next mm -hmm. question. So. What is the Linux Foundation and Hyperledger, kind of how did all this kind of get started? Yeah, so you know, I serve as general manager for all things blockchain and identity at the Linux Foundation. The Linux Foundation for the last 20 years uh, plus has been the home for the most important open source projects. Obviously, the Linux kernel being one of them, probably everything we've touched today has some sort of a Linux based uh, uh, operating system. Um, but really, you know, across the years, over the last 10 years, uh, things like Kubernetes, where cloud computing is, um, automotive grade Linux that is running, you know, Toyota, Mazda, Subaru cars, even the Academy Software Foundation where the film industry comes together to work on code collaboratively in open source, um, together collaborate so that they can spend time building the things that matter for us who watch movies. We want to see great, great 3D rendering, for example. All that code is hosted under the Linux Foundation across telecom, for example, LF networking, um, uh, uh, close to 75% of the telecommunications open source staff sit under the Linux Foundation. Very early on in 2015, we understood and the community understood that blockchain was going to be a thing. Now it's taken a little bit longer than I think a lot of people thought, but I think we're making huge process, process, uh, progress as we've seen here. So today, you know, uh, uh, Hyperledger Foundation is the home to some of the most important open source projects out there. And we're really proud of being a place where companies, both in the crypto space as well in the enterprise space, and governments can bring their code and bring their developers into community to collaborate on these code bases as well. It's really exciting stuff to see the enterprise leaders that you guys bring on board. That really gives me conviction in the space of, okay, there are people really building stuff here that's going to last and is of useful you know, use. And you kind of alluded to this a little bit. You guys have a lot of new members coming on to Hyperledger and everything like that. Can you tell us a little bit about those announcements? Yeah, so you know, this year we've gotten you know great members like Citi, for example. Citibank joined, you know, um, they have uh, some solutions out there with token city services that are built on Hyperledger Bezu. Um, we also, just this week here at Consensus, made some great announcements. Uh, for example, uh, we have Chainlink, Layer Zero, uh, Cheesecake Labs. They actually did a contribution for a, a, 
Stellar Connector into Hyperledger Beisu. Uh, we also have Applied Blockchain. Um, and Intersect is another one of our newest members in the Cardano ecosystem, and we're excited to partner with them around building really truly open development and open uh, source developer communities, which I think is fantastic. Um, and we have you know lots of great new projects. Um, you know we just welcomed uh, this year Web 3JS, which is an Ethereum integration library. Uh, just this week we also announced Identus, which is a contribution from the Cardano ecosystem, the Atala Prism, uh, and it's an identity enterprise agent. So a lot of growth in both the projects and cross layer one and layer two communities as well, which we're very excited about because we want to be the home where people who want to collaborate um, and openly develop uh, under open governance that the Linux Foundation and Hyperledger provide the ecosystem as well. I love what you do and I love what the foundation does. You guys are leaders in the space and I guess one last question I kind of want to selfishly wrap up with and the folks is what do you see come across your desk that excites you personally about the future? Is there anything that you've seen recently that you get excited about and are able to talk about? You know, I think adoption, you know, when you start seeing the large banks on stage talking about not just POCs, uh, but real, you know, adoption and, and production implementations that are bringing return, really, you know, ROI and efficiencies to the market as well, that gets me excited. Mm -hmm. But I think for us, you know, as the market continues to grow and um, the work between, you know, permissionless and permissioned enterprise deployments are starting to blend in and the kind of code contributions and participants that we're getting here at the foundation across multiple layer ones um, and layer twos, I think it's just indicative that people understand the value of open collaboration and open development and how important it's going to be for, you know, especially regul regulated industries to adopt open source code um, that has providence, that people know and understand and trust. Um, and we're happy that the Linux Foundation is the place that these are uh, projects are coming in. So you're going to hear a lot of great news coming up in the next few months on the topic as well. I'm excited and thank you so much for a moment of your time. This has been my favorite interview of Consensus, so thank you so much. Anytime, man. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Look All forward right. to seeing you again. All right, have a